In this video, I'd like to walk you through one of the options for deploying the FMG. That's the acronym for the Florida Manager. Now, we could use Florida Manager services up in the cloud. We could have an appliance that's providing the Florida Manager functionality, or we could deploy Florida Manager as a VM. So in this demonstration, here is my current topology here in my lab environment. So I've got these three firewalls that are part of the same security fabric. I've got this firewall over here at the branch office, which is an HA pair using the IP addresses as shown. And they're also implemented in a zone-based firewall deployment as far as the firewall policies. Also at the moment, I currently have a 40 analyzer that all these 40 gates are reporting into. However, I don't yet, actually the truth be told, I do have a Florida manager <laughs> that is in place and ready to go, but because I wanna walk you through the process of downloading and deploying a Florida manager, we're gonna just imagine for a moment that I don't yet have a Florida manager VM deployed in my environment and that we're gonna go ahead and get the image and deploy it. Now, as far as the deployment goes for a virtual machine, Fortinet has a VM image for Florida manager for most virtualized platforms, including vSphere, which I'll be using as part of the demo, and Microsoft's Hyper-V, and many others. Also, when we download the image for the Florida Manager, it's gonna require an account, a user account up at Fortinet. And if we want to, we can also download the Florida Manager and then use a trial license. That's good for like a few devices that we can manage. And it also has a time limitation as well. So I'd like to walk you through the deployment of the Florida Manager VM. Now, a couple of things to be aware of in my topology here, my management network is the 192.168.1 one network, and that's where my management PC is, and that's where my 4D analyzer is at .81. Firewall 1's management IP address on that subnet is 51, and that's a slash 24, and Firewall 2 is at .52, Firewall 3 is at .53, and the branch firewall is at .71. So without further ado, let's open up a browser. We'll head up to support.fortinet.com and let's get to work in getting that image. All right, so here we go. So I have logged in as my user account at Fortinet. And although they may change the interface from time to time, if we wanna download an image currently, we'd go to support. And then over here under downloads, we have firmware download, VM images, service updates, etc. What we wanna do is we wanna download the VM image for the platform where we're going to deploy for the manager, the VM. So we'll click here on VM images, and then we'll select the product. So from the drop down here, we wanna download for the manager, and then for the platform, we'll go ahead and use the drop down here, and we wanna download the image. And in my environment, because I'm using vSphere and the ESXi host, I wanna download the VM appropriate for that platform. So I'll click here for VMware ESXi, because I'm running vSphere, and then we can choose our version. So here, 763, you notice it's F as in feature. Now in a production environment, we don't want to run the feature version unless there's a really good and proven reason to because it's a feature version and there could be hiccups or problems along the way. So if we look at 747, here it is 747M as in Mary, and that's the mature flavor. So for the demo, I am gonna go with the feature version because it's a lab environment and we'll go ahead and grab the correct image. Now, now there's two options to download. One says, do you wanna download the image you need for an initial deployment of the VM, which we do, or do you want to upgrade from a previous version? So we'll go ahead and do the download here. It's only 410 megabytes as of right now. Here's the hashes associated with it. We'll go ahead and click here and that started the download. So that's downloading right now to my management computer. All right, so that is downloaded. Let me go ahead and grab it. So here is that file in my downloads folder. Also, before we use it, if you just wanna verify that you weren't downloading this from another site, which maybe could inject malware or some other malicious code as part of the image, we could also do a validation using the checksum. So this is currently in my downloads folder and I'm on a Windows 11 computer. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy all the checksums, right click, copy, and I'm gonna put that in a notepad document. So I'll right click, paste, and there it is. So I have a, a regular, it's probably MD5, and then SHA-512, and looks like that wrapped. So let me go ahead and, yeah, sure enough. So I've got a SHA-512 hash right here, and we can generate our own hash value on that same file, and it should match this same value that's provided from the website. So let's do that. Let me just bring up a command prompt, and here's a command prompt on my local computer. Let me do a CD downloads, and then DIR, and sure enough, there is our file. And let's do a get dash file hash. And because we're in that folder, I can just copy and paste that name right there and paste and press enter. And there's a SHA-256 hash. So that gave us the SHA-256 hash. I need the SHA-512 hash. So I need to tell it that I want the SHA-512 hash. So I'll hit the up arrow key 
and we'll use a dash algorithm space and then type in SHA-512. Now press enter and that should generate the SHA-512 hash. And that does not match up. <laughs> so if we go back to the website, Oh, unless I grabbed the wrong hash. I did. I grabbed the hash for the upgrade, not for the actual new deployment. Let me grab that correct hash. Right click, copy. My bad. Go back to our notepad document and let me get rid of all that and do a paste. And that is the SHA-512 hash for the zip for the new deployment. Let's bring back my command line. So now if we compare the hash, DDC7FF2, etc., that exactly matches right here, which implies that we have an untainted file directly from Fortinet and no one's tampered with it. Fantastic. So now that we have the file, let me go ahead and close my notepad document. So now that we have the file, we can go ahead and extract it. So here in my downloads folder, I'll right click and we'll go ahead and say extract all. I have a pop-up window asking me where I want to extract it to. So I'll go ahead and click on extract and there it goes. I made a folder and then it's putting those files in that folder. So the VMDKs in this VMware environment, those are hard drives effectively. And then the OVFs are the instructions for the VM. So if you're deploying it in a current vSphere environment, we can use this one right here, VM64, HW14, that's hardware version 14 vapp.ovf if you're deploying it on an older flavor of vSphere for example six or seven you might want to use one of the other options here so to deploy the new vm based on these files let me bring over my vSphere environment so here's my vSphere environment i've got a couple hosts that are up and running to esxi host and let's go ahead and deploy this on uh, ESXi1 as a demonstration now also just so you know behind the scenes i've also got this VM right here called FMG 2025, which is already deployed. But I wanted to walk you through the process of deploying a new VM for Forda Manager. So we're just going to let that one sit for a while. And we'll come back to it a little later. So to create a new VM, I'm going to go right here to my Fortinet folder, right click and say deploy OVF template, which is a fancy way of saying I want to deploy a new virtual machine from a template. And that's what we downloaded from Fortinet a few minutes ago. So we'll click here on deploy OVF template. In fact, let me make this font a little bit bigger. So we can see a little bit better. Fantastic. So I'll right click here on this folder, deploy OVF template, and then I want to pull from a local file or files in this case. So I'll click here on upload files. And then here in my downloads folder, I'll go to that folder for the extracted files and use my control key and grab fmg.vmdk as one hard drive, data drive.vmdk as the second hard drive. And then because I want a fairly current version of vSphere, I'm going to go ahead and use the hardware 14 vapp.ovf. And with those three selected, I'll click on open. Then we'll go ahead and click on next. And then I'm gonna call this FMG demo. And this FMG demo VM is gonna be placed in the Fortinet folder, although we can move it if we want to either now or later. I'll leave it there for now. We could also say we wanna customize the virtual machine's hardware. So I'll go ahead and check that as well. And we'll click on next. And as far as which ESXi host we wanna run this on, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on ESXi1 and click on next. So ESXi1 is one of the several rack servers I have behind me, and ESXi1 has plenty of space and CPU and RAM to support the Forda Manager. All right, I'm reviewing details. Uh, it's gonna go ahead and do thick provisioning, but I can change that as I go forward. Thick provisioning basically says, hey, I'm gonna tie up 504 gigabytes <laughs> um, right off the bat, where thin provisioning would only use as much physical space as that VM needs to use, and it could grow dynamically up to the max. So I'll update that here as we continue. So I'll click on next, I'll agree by scrolling down and clicking on I accept all license agreements, click on next. And then it's asking me effectively, where do you want to store this virtual machine's files? So I've got an iSCSI network attached storage. It's called iSCSI 3 RAID 5. Its capacity is 48 terabytes and I have provision 18. So I have about 45 terabytes of free space. That'll be great, uh, plenty. And then here I'm also gonna specify that I wanna do thin provisioning just to not tie up, for example, all the disk space that that VM needs unless it really is using that disk space. So that's a way in a lab environment to not waste a bunch of space. And we'll click on next. Now it's asking me about the four network interface cards. So in the interface, whether it's the CLI or the GUI on the Forda Manager, this would show up as port one, port two, port three, port four. So I'm gonna put port one. I'm gonna browse and put it on my production 192 network with no tag. That means for me anyway, uh, no 802.1Q tag. That's just my basic management network, no tagging needed. So I'll select that with the radio button right there. And once it's selected, I'll click on OK. And then I'm not gonna use the other three interfaces, so I can 
have them park wherever, and we'll click on Next. Now it's asking us to customize some of these settings. I'm gonna leave all the defaults and we'll customize that once we get the VM up and running. We'll click on Next. And here it's showing us the details for the hardware because I said I wanted to customize the hardware. So it's gonna have four CPUs, 16 gigs of RAM, and these two are based on the new hard disk from the VMDK files. Now also here, if we scroll down, you notice this one network adapter here, <laughs> which is gonna be port one, it's too bad it's not in the right order. However, anyway, that's gonna be port one based on what we said we wanted to have happen. And currently it's not showing us connected because the VM is not running and there's a video card associated with it. So sometimes uh, on the VM that you deploy, there's limits in place based on the licensing you're using regarding how much RAM and how much CPU it can support. So just be aware that initially, you may wanna just deploy it without tweaking these values. And then based on your license, if you wanna go back with the VM powered off, you could upgrade the number of CPUs, the amount of memory, if your license supports it. And so I'm gonna go ahead and take all these settings that are currently in place and click on next. Here's a summary. The VM is gonna be called FMG Demo. It's coming from this template. It's gonna be in this folder. There's the ESXi host providing the hypervisor services. It's gonna do thin provisioning, fantastic on that data store. And then the network one, which is port one, is gonna be mapped to that port group called Prod 192, effectively placing it on my management network. And we'll go ahead and click on finish. All right, so if we go to recent tasks here, it is now importing and deploying that VM. I forget whether or not I said it should automatically power it up, <laughs> uh, but in any case, uh, we'll see what happens and then we can power it up manually if we need to. So if we go down to the folder here, uh, once it's deployed, we should see that VM here as well. And let me sort by name and there it is right there. There's FMG demo and it's currently not ready. It's still being deployed. So we'll give that a, another minute or two to complete. Also, if you're interested in training while this is deploying, if you're interested in training on other Fortinet products, for example, Forti Analyzer or Fortigate Administration, we have separate courses on all those independently as well. So feel free to check out our entire library regarding Fortinet products if you want more specific training on any of those specific products. All right, so the import's done, the deployment's done. And if we click here, let me go ahead and close the recent tasks. There's our FMG demo. And here's summary. And currently it is powered off. So we could right click on this VM and go to power and then do power on here. Or with it selected, we could go ahead and simply click on this icon for the power on, which we're gonna do right now. And that will power on that virtual machine. And then we'll go ahead and click on launch remote console. And that way we can have a little window, if you will, like sitting at the console of an appliance, we can logically sit at the console of this VM as it powers up. And this may take a few minutes, so we'll give it a minute or two to complete its power on. And then in the next video, I'd like to walk you through what the defaults are in place on this VM. And then I'd also like to walk you through changing those to meet your needs in your environment. So I'll see you in the next video as we continue the configuration of this newly deployed Forta Manager. Hey, thanks for watching and subscribe right here to get the latest information from CBT Nuggets. And if you're new to or considering a career in the world of IT, head on over to CBT Nuggets and sign up for a free trial.